I'm João Martins, um, and I'm presenting ClickOS, which was work done by me at my colleagues at NEC, as well as the University of Bucharest. So, how does the network look like a start in schools? Uh, end hosts with the network in between connected with switches and the routers. Pretty simple. But the reality is quite different. Middle boxes are a common place in today's networks uh, uh, and are important for many reasons. Security, uh, monitoring, load balancing, dealing with adverse exhaustion issues, uh, performance, and some more dubious boxes like the advertisements in Shenzhen box. There, these middle boxes are really useful and they extend the network in our ways, but they come with a lot of drawbacks. First, the price of the box and the power costs over time. Uh, it's difficult to add new features as we get locked into vendors to add and upgrade firmware and whatsoever. They are difficult to manage, often require um, specialized personnel to deal with these boxes. And last, they cannot be scaled on demand as, as uh, demand increases or diminishes. So. Recently, uh, there has been a trend towards network function virtualization, as the previous talk introduced, whereby we, we want to shift these hardware middle boxes into software virtualized platforms running on commodity hardware. Clearly, it would solve most of the issues I described before, and in addition, we would have another advantages. First, we could share uh, the same box uh, targeting more than one middle box, so we would save a number of physical units. Um, and in addition to that, we would uh, consolidate more, redu therefore reducing power costs. And afterwards, since it's software, you could just boot uh, your BRAS V1000 on another VM, shift 10,000 folds there, something breaks. Uh, after two months, you shift to the same, to the previous VM. So you could get this flexibility. But the question that um, still remains somehow unanswered is whether we can build such a platform um, uh, on commodity hardware, while still achieving the same performance as hardware offerings. Um, that's what we want to propose here with ClickOS. In one sentence, ClickOS is a specialized VM, tiny design-based uh, minimalistic virtual machine that runs Click module router software. So our goal is to build a, uh, a flexible and high-performance virtualized software platform. Um, and toward this goal, we set a few number of requirements and um, uh, problems we, we wanted to tackle on. First, uh, these middle boxes need to be really fast, uh, to be booted really fast, which means you could boot VMs on demand uh, once you have a flash crowd or uh, decrease the number of VMs once uh, your network is um, um, low power. Um, sorry, on, on the low rates. Um, uh, small footprints of these middle boxes, which means hosting hundreds of middle boxes on the same VM, on the same machine. Uh, performance isolation, which means each middle box should be well isolated in its, in its resources, as well as um, operators wanted to deploy uh, multiple middle boxes from multiple vendors on different operating systems. Uh, performance uh, to cope with the hardware offerings and should also delay as little delay as possible. And finally, flexibility as it should cover a wide range of uh, middle box functionality. Um, with ClickOS, we fulfill all of these requirements and I would just give a, just highlight some of the uh, achievements with ClickOS. We boot is in as little as 30 milliseconds, so the hand hosts don't even notice. Uh, it only requires just five, five megabytes when running. Uh, isolation, so it's a virtual machine, so it's provided out of the box by Zen. It achieves 10 gigabit line rate from almost all packet sizes and adds as little as 45 microseconds delay. And flexibility towards using click modular router as it provides already a lot of electric processing elements. So what is ClickOS? Uh, under Zen, normally VMs uh, are composed with this um, power virtualization layer in which this uh, small layer communicates with the hypervisor to say program page tables, CPU timers, scheduling, and so on. And 
On top of that, you have your standard Linux kernel or, or NetBSD kernel, or in applications running on top. So with ClickOS, what, what we do is we remove all of the clutter from the conventional operating system, and um, we just uh, we, we use MinOS for this purpose, and MinOS is just a single address space uh, min, uh, operating system. No uh, uh, preemptive scheduler, so the application needs to appropriate with the kernel to, to be able to run together. Uh, it runs on a single core only, and just runs a single application. Uh, this is still important. Just a single application, which is click module router. So in essence, it's a VM just to process packets. So the work uh, consisted of uh, having a build uh, system to boot these ClickOS VMs. We actually extended towards building other things than ClickOS. Uh, we had to emulate the click control plane over Xen, so we don't have a slash proc file system, so we had to use the Xen, store, uh, the Xen services to, to provide similar, uh, the, the same functionality. Reducing boot time, so we started with something like uh, one second, and we were able to decrease up to, down to 30 milliseconds. We're actually, uncompressing the image takes longer than booting the VM, which is a bit. And we did further optimization to the data plane so that we can achieve 10 gigabit line rates for almost all packet sizes. And afterwards, uh, because it's not only about performance, we actually tested with real middle box processing and uh, we did a performance analysis on it. Fortunately, I don't have time to cover all of those, uh, so I will be talking mostly about the last two items, which I think is uh, uh, one of the major contributions of this paper. So let me talk to you a little bit more how Zen uh, Network I.O. actually works. Normally we have this DOM0, which is the guest operating system, which purpose is to administrate the whole physical box. And normally in conventional deployments, you have the, the network drivers, the, the cards, and the other peripherals there. On top of that, you have your NIC. We use IXB Intel drivers. And you have uh, this NIC attached to OpenV switch. Attached to this OpenV switch, there is a virtual interface, which is assigned to a VM. And it is managed by a backend driver, which is then called NetBack. NetBack exposes to the guest a piece of shared memory and some special Zen interrupts uh, to that the guest, the, the VM, can communicate with the backend VM. Through the, towards this net front. And on top of that, we add the two uh, elements equivalent to from in, into device that are able to communicate with the net front uh, on MinUS. So the, our goal is to reach 10 gigabits line rate, um, which means a total of 830 uh, in 10,000 packets per second, all the way up to 1488 million packets per second. The problem is when we put all of this together, uh, there were several bottlenecks. First, OpenV switch alone couldn't forward more than 300,000 packets per second. If we take the switch out and just leave at NetBack, um, it couldn't forward more than 350,000 packets per second. And when we put all of the pipe together, it was only able to forward a total of 225,000 packets per second. Re for reference, all of these maximum size packets. So. To better understand what, what's, what's wrong, uh, we did even deeper analysis um, and we trace, uh, we did a per function call uh, trace of where our domain costs are. So when we want to transmit a packet, uh, when the guest wants to transmit a packet, uh, the bu packet buffers live on the guest and they need to be shared with the backend domain and therefore copy it into, his own, into the backend uh, address space, and afterwards he can forward back the packet to the switch. So this copy that happens is really expensive. By expensive, I mean almost 800 nanoseconds just to copy the packet. Then when NetBack receives the packet in its, its own memory, uh, he can, he do, uh, he uses this packet metadata data structures available, uh, SKBs or MBUFs in FreeBSD, which are also really expensive, as tackled in NetMap recent work, for example. And it total accounts to 600 nanoseconds uh, on all of these operations. 
And afterwards, when we are ready to send the packet to the switch, we take a total of 3.4 microseconds on the, the call that actually forwarded the packet to the host stack. So, and on top of that, the netfront from Minio is not as performant as Linux netfront, almost uh, having half of the performance. So, how did we optimize this? Um, the graphs on, on the right shows the, the different stages, uh, the different uh, stages of the optimization. And we started with just as little as 8,000 packets per second, which is less than 100 megabits per second in MinOS. So the first thing we did was um, reusing Zen page permission. And what's this Zen page permissions? Each domain keeps a track of which other domains are allowed to see his own memory. And this was being done by a, on a per packet basis, granting, revoking access to that, page, to that page. So by reusing them, we save 40 times, uh, we, the rate go, went up to 40 times better, like 300,000 packets per second, as simple as that. Afterwards, um, we removed the main, uh, one of the main costs, which means replacing the switch with the valley switch. A uh, valley switch which was introduced in Connex uh, two years ago is a really fast software switch which is able to forward between virtual ports 18 million packets per second. And by using valley switch, it also means uh, it's based on netmap, so it's, we don't need the packet metadata data structure, so we also remove that cost as well. And afterwards, we increased the shared memory region by 10 times, so it's uh, uh, from 1 to 200, 128 uh, total of requests to 1,000. And that, all of these three optimizations leveraged the um, throughput up to four times for minimum size packets and three times for maximum size packets. Although it's still far away from what middle boxes require, uh, which is in the rates of million packets per second. So a quick recap is that we replaced the switch real pay the packet metadata uh, that restructures manipulation, and overall, we ended up with a much thinner netpack. So it was doing very little as opposed to the other netpack. So the only remaining cost to eliminate was to remove the copy. And the way we did this was we mapped the memory regarding a soft, uh, virtual interface on Valley all the way up to the guest, which means the netmap that restructures and buffers all the way to the netfront. Uh, and because we, we are changing how I.O. happens in this case, uh, we need to change NetFront to be able to interpret the data correctly. Then, since we are sharing a lot of memory at this point, let's see how much memory we share in actual um, runtime. So for the default valoring size, we uh, share a total of two megabytes uh, per ring. So normally you have uh, rings for TX, rings for RX, and you share a total of two megabytes per ring. So you only require four additional megabytes in your mem uh, virtual machine to be able to drive 10 gigs. But the problem with this approach is that we break other uh, guests, say FreeBSD and Linux, but we also implemented uh, Linux um, NetFront driver that to show that our optimizations do apply to other operating systems and reaching around eight times better performance. So overall, the click prototype consists of uh, very little changes to the core, around 100 lines of code uh, to the main core regarding timers and uh, uh, random number generator and, so, and some other things. Um, we built a new tool stack for Zen, so you don't use the standard tool, uh, Zen tools uh, to deliver fast boot up times. We develop, developed a tool chain to be able to build more specialized VMs to building other things than Click. Um, total amount of changes to NetPack and NetFront are around 500 lines of code uh, on the back end and 600 on the front end. And we extended the switch so that we are able to connect uh, hardware uh, ports. And I can think offline more on this uh, regarding the switch, which is decoupling the switching forwarding engine uh, the switching fabric from the actual lookup. So you can actually implement your own, for example, open flow. In what, and you don't even need to care about switching packets all around. So let's proceed to the evaluation. We did um, a lot of experiments. 
uh, from boot times to state insertion to uh, evaluating the switch, evaluating the footprint, uh, base performance of the VM, implementation of the middle boxes, and uh, so on and so forth. But uh, we don't have enough time to cover all of those, so I will focus on the, uh, these three experiments, which I think is the more relevant. Uh, so we, the first the first experiment was uh, we wanted to evaluate ClickOS based performance, and we we use one of our low end servers uh, with four cores, a Linux three six ten, and we have they are direct cabling all to, uh, with the two machines. So we have an external machine which are actually receiving the packets and measuring it. We assign one core for the VMs, three cores for the DOM zero, and we, the results look like something like this. We achieve 95% in transmit performance um, for small packet sizes and bigger rings, and line rate for all the remaining packet sizes. The ring size is important so that we can we can allow smaller rings for VMs that don't require that much throughput as 10 gigs. Then we actually, since performance is not the only thing that matters, we actually wanted to see how it actually works with packet processing. So we proceeded to forwarding tests. Uh, so we connected three boxes. Uh, one, host one transmits packet to host two. And we have a, a third machine that uh, does the actual middle box processing. The same low CPU, uh, low CPU uh, requirements, three cores for uh, DOM0, one core for the VMs. Let me briefly describe what each middle box is. Um, we have a base baseline performance, uh, which is the wire config, which is uh, just do base forwarding. Then um, we did another mirror, which it just swaps source and destination MAC addresses, and a standard uh, an IP router, um, a firewall with uh, five rules, a almost standard compliant carry grade net, a software BRAS with does um, PPP termination, PPPoE, uh, sorry, PPPoE termination, PPP encapsulation, R proxy, and IP routing. A load balancer, a f uh, flow monitor that keeps uh, flow stats, and an intrusion detection system based on regular expression matching. So most of these middle boxes use uh, some of them, just are just baseline performance. So they are just using click. But as you can see from the carry grade NAT and BRAS, which are more production ready middle boxes, is still able to derive with that amount of processing really high throughput. And because I wanted to show you how optimizations do apply to Linux, we did uh, an actual test for receiving and transmitting. We compare it against out-of-the-box performance with KVM and Zen. Um, we don't compare to additional alternatives. We wanted to see how much impact we get against uh, the standard platform. Note that our optimizations do apply with NetMap applications, so whole stack is still in the, uh, still in the future. And I would like to announce uh, here uh, in this conference that uh, we are releasing the code for a few four hours ago, and we can check out the, um, the website for more information regarding the switch, um, regarding the VM, the optimizations to the I/O. All the code is on GitHub. We have tutorials how to use this, and because we did a whole giant cleanup to the whole thing, we actually improved performance by 30%. Uh, so let me just do a quick demo. Um, to show sorry no. so I will connect to this compute so I will connect um, three terminals And we will first start by a uh, uh, really fast um, a base forwarding test. And we will basically build, uh, start a firewall, which just for uh, allows packets to go through, which matches that IP address and being UDP packets. Just a simple, just a simple filter. So let's put the VM. Mm. 
Then we start to uh, a packet receiver. So um, we start the packet receiver, and then we just generate packets as fast as we can. So the packets will go to the VM, and if they are matched, go back again to the other port. And um, we will see that if we, I'm setting the manually the, the, the source IP address, which goes through the firewall, so you will be able to see the rates, roughly 7.2 million packets per second, which is above the graphs you see in the paper. Then if we um, don't set the, specifically it will use an IP address that doesn't get matched by, that, the, firewall, uh, by the firewall, and you don't see any packets. Next, I would like to show you, before reaching the conclusions, uh, getting to the conclusions, how we can actually boot 100 VMs in a few seconds. So I have this uh, very small script that just creates and starts a middle box, so it's very simple. The, 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 the script doesn't do anything uh, magic, so it's just straight to the point. And we just do a time to see how much it takes to actually boot the VMs. It already finished, but the SSH connects a bit slow. So 10 seconds to boot 100 VMs. So it's not exactly 30 milliseconds because there are, as, as you boot more VMs, you increase the boot time, and also there are some spikes uh, on some of the Zen services. Uh, Zen services. But this is um, the demo I, want to, I wanted to show. Uh, now, sorry. No, I cannot uh, simply reason. It's just, <laughs> and to, uh, to finish, so packet high speed packet IO is possible without compromising or relying on any CPU features like uh, sharing uh, like huge pages. We can do really fast packet without it. We don't rely on any unique spe specialized unique features. Um, another contribution is that we made a specialized operating system uh, and the key thing is that since it has a very little sm footprint, you can actually boot a lot of VMs on top efficiently. Uh, it takes 30 milliseconds to boot, five megabytes in uh, memory footprint, and the main diff, it, this is actually the main difference between this and the previous approach. Uh, consolidation is really a thing that matters to us. And as a future work, we are looking towards to put massive consolidation. So we have heavy, now we want massive, so which means 1,000, 2,000 VMs. Um, and improving inter-VM communication uh, for chaining these network functions. And uh, exploiting the boot times so that we can react to network conditions uh, on the scene packet. And that's it. I would happy to ask any questions. Hello, I have a question. <clears throat> As I understand, at the heart of your operating system is Linux. Have you did any changes to the source code to handle uh, high load? And what is the CPU utilization and the CPU load okay. among the cores? Among the cores, so the, so the valid software switch, the context is on the context of the sender. So everything is then on the context on the thread sending the packets. So it's just one core handling the NIC if you receive packets and another core taking care of the virtual port. So it's in short just one core <laughs> on the DOM0. And for the guest CPU usage, it's if you're not receiving packets, is zero CPU usage. Uh, so we don't have any pool mode like DPDK, for example. And yeah, that's it. So what about high load? Does your system handle well? Ah, yes, yes. We, we, it's, it's on the papers. I just didn't have time to cover, but we actually boot 100 VMs doing as fast as, as much as they can, and they are fair among each other. 
100 VMs uh, booting and filling all the pipe. Yeah, I'm curious about that case where you have 100 VMs. Do you do anything about the CPU scheduling for these VMs? So how, do, how does that affect latency as well? For 100 VMs, um, I think going forward, 100, we can see probably a bit more scheduling issues. But the VMs were fair among each other. Although the contribution, the individual contribution per VM rate decreases slightly. But overall, we didn't see a lot of issues. Um, for the packet receipt, do you still use uh, Zen's uh, virtual IRQs uh, to trigger uh, interrupts? Yeah, we use yeah we use event channels. The and do you have uh, does your mini OS go into like a polling mode if it detects like too many interrupts, or are you still processing interrupts? So the the, the interrupts happen on a per batch basis. So the backend notifies once they have a batch of packets to process or one packet to process. So it's not like he's constantly interrupting the guest. And he doesn't do any pulling mode, so unless the backend notifies him, he doesn't do anything. He does, not, does nothing, basically. Okay. So, uh, let's thank the speaker once more.